everybody, it's Dog here for AIPT here at New York Comic Con 2016. And I'm standing with a guy that you probably know without maybe realizing that you know him. The founder of Newsarama, Mr. Matt Brady. Hi there. But we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about something else. What was your panel about yesterday morning? Our panel yesterday was about the use of comics in teaching STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And so that's what I do now. I've disappeared from Newsarama. I disappeared eight years ago from <laughs> And uh, since then, I've been teaching high school science. I came from science, and now I'm back in science. And I teach chemistry and physics, and I do it with a lot of help from comics and pop culture examples and uh, movies and movies, TV, comic books, everything I can find to get my students engaged and interested. So you were a physicist before you were a comic book guy? Actually, I was, I got my master, undergrad in biology, master's in marine biology, was working on a PhD in physiology oh. way back when, and I started writing for Comic Buyer's Guide and Wizard. Um, and a few other places, and then that turned into writing uh, with Mike Duran from Newsarama and working with him that eventually became Newsarama, and uh, went on for a good 12 years, and I'd always kind of thought, you know, it'd be nice to get back into science and get back into teaching. By the time that Newsarama was kind of, I was feeling it might be time to go, my wife had gone into teaching, and so she kind of blazed the trail for me and I just followed right along. All right, and you've got, uh, for people who aren't lucky enough to be in school, uh, you've got a website now called the science of dot org. Dot org. Yep. Uh, did that kind of come from your teaching or was it vice versa? How did those two things influence each other? It was about two and a half years ago that my wife and I were talking and I had always used pop culture examples and I was always a big fan of like the science of books, right. uh, the science of Star Trek, uh, the science of, yeah, a lot of those different ones. And so we said, well, we really need to work on this and use it, pitch it at a classroom level. And so what we do with the science of.org is I write articles that are aimed at a high school science level, which I feel is both appropriate for our students and the general American reader, I think, is probably has an understanding of science at about a high school level for good or for bad. Um, and so on the site, I write articles from things that will I will use in class or I would assign my students to, to try out. And write me a piece about this, such as uh, Ant-Man writing on Hawkeye's arrow. Um, what would the acceleration be? We had to do some research and find out, well, what kind of boat is he using? What's yeah. the acceleration? How fast does that arrow leave? And could you hold on? It's... Spoiler alert, could Ant-Man ride the arrow? He would be ant paced <laughs> along there. Now, is but, that disappointing for your students? Does it, is that kind of like a buzzkill, or well, does that actually help? That's the trick, and that came up in the panel yesterday, where some teachers are saying that, just how do you get around you know, killing the fun, yeah. and it's it's a tight line to, to kind of go back and forth on, but what I do is I make sure that they understand the science, and then we kind of bring in the example, like, okay, could this really happen? Why or why not? You explain to me, is this something that could happen? If, if this is something that yeah. could happen or something that couldn't happen, you explain, show me and prove it to me, yes or no. And so they they didn't use the, uh, the Ant-Man experiment, experiment the Ant-Man article in class, but they did use one with Iceman, for instance. Mm -hmm. Iceman, if he turns into solid ice right beside you, well, he has to let off a whole lot of heat. And that heat has to go somewhere, and he's kind of like a bomb when it goes off. And I don't think there's any, any of my students got any less fun out of Iceman, yeah. or said, oh, you ruined Iceman for me. <laughs> um, but they understood the science of it, and they thought they made it more enjoyable for themselves. Now, if some X-Men writer I would actually think about that, that could be a great superpower. It would be, but it would be kind of tough to fold back into continuity. Yeah. Then why didn't he blow yeah. up all the time that he was he was doing that? Secondary mutation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see the the science of as kind of like setting up lesson plans for other people in similar situations, or is it more just raw? It's right now. It's just articles that are we kind of put them out there as examples of ways to approach it. Right. Um, the problem with, of course, with writing lesson plans and selling them or making them available to other teachers is it's copyright issues. Yeah. And so what, what my wife and I try to do with this is not so much here do this, here do this, here's a lesson plan, here's a worksheet, because that would be that would start getting into legal yeah. I don't think the company would call them gray zones. I think it would be very black and white legal wise. <laughs> um, but what we're trying to do is work with teachers and get them enthused about this as well to, to reach students 
the idea that you know students don't want to learn or students are Mira, using science, pila, pa. we found that's just that's nonsense. They they really no, want to no, know no. this stuff, but they got to understand it in a way that makes sense to them. And something that's relevant. Yeah, to them. 30, 50 years ago, the idea of well, this is this is the same science that puts men on the moon. Okay, that might have been enough to hook them. Yeah. Now it's it's a lot tougher, and we have a lot of teachers that are still saying the this is the kind of stuff that put men on the moon. That, that's great, but they don't speak that language. Yeah. They speak Fast and Furious. They speak Justice League. They speak Batman versus Superman, and that's what hooks them. Okay. So where do you see all this going? Uh, your own personal lesson plans, and maybe the future of the science of for everyone else. Too. We'd we'd love to broaden it out. We're hopefully going to talk with um, some companies about. Uh, using characters and things like that in the future, but that's way down the road. We'd love to um, get it out there that we're teaching in a more rigorous academic way, perhaps than some shows or some podcasts that yeah, you see, sure, of course. and really get the idea that I mean, there are some important concepts to get out, but there are also some important educational concepts, differentiation, scaffolding. Um, approaching this for a population that speaks English and that doesn't speak English as their first language. And so we'd like to broaden this out and make it more widely available, but in a more in a, in a way that's more true to, to the to the educational uh, educational system and the educational method that we're familiar with. Okay. Well we wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so Thanks much. Uh, keep it locked here for more coverage from New York Comic Con twenty sixteen on AI.